Markdown Monster is an easy to use markdown editor for Windows. Here I have a README markdown document open that I can type into on the left side, which is the editor portion. The editor portion allows me to make changes to the document so I can highlight text and then either use the toolbar to inject text or I can type into the document to highlight text, for example, this italic text. So as you're typing here, the preview pane on the right allows you to preview the HTML that you've rendered from the markdown. The preview rendering is handled by a markdown parser that runs inside of Markdown Monster and it gives you a nicely styled formatted page. The page uses a particular theme, in this case Darkhan, which you can switch to one of the other themes that are provided here. For example, here's a GitHub theme that's very similar to the styling that's used on GitHub. And some of you will probably like this for your GitHub type projects where your README files go. So if you switch to a different format, let's say this blackout one, which is very different, you'll notice that the layout changes a little bit. You get different fonts, different colors, and the code listings look quite different. You can also turn the preview pane off altogether. Some people prefer working with a distraction-free mode, so they only enable the preview browser when they need it. For the rest of the time, there's no browser. Personally, I like the preview, and I like to work in something a little bit brighter than this blackout mode. The editor also supports theming with a number of themes available for switching. Twilight is the default theme, which is the dark theme. The other popular one is Visual Studio, which is closest to what you expect to see in a Visual Studio type environment. You can play around with all the other ones, but personally I like to stick with Twilight because that's the one that just fits best with this UI. Over in the editor pane, you can see that there are multiple tabs open. So I can go to this core API errors markdown document and you can see here that it's a very long document. In fact, there's a bit of statistics at the bottom of the document here that shows me there's 3000 words, 470 lines in this document. The tabs also allow you to open a folder directly into that document. So here's the markdown document and here are all the images that are embedded inside of it that happen to be stored in the same folder. So that's kind of handy. And then you can also open a command window here. So if you want to go, for example, and commit your changes to Git, you can do that right here as well. The editor remembers all the tabs that were open. So when I shut down and come back in and start it back up, the editor will remember the exact same document that was previously open. So you can just continue working where you left off. Next, I'm going to create a new document. So you can use File New or Control N to do this. And then I can go ahead and type my header here and some additional text that makes up the subhead. Notice here that there's a typing error and it's underlined in red. I can right click and get my spelling correction for this and the text is automatically fixed up for me. I can also type some basic text into the document and then use the markup menu to mark up the individual text. So for example, I can highlight this text and make it bold from the menu or I can use the hotkeys for this, for example, control I, or I can simply type bold text or italic text. So here is some more formatted text. You can see there is the bold text and italic and also some strikeout text. Now I can highlight all of this text and click on the list button or press control L and turn that content into a list. I can also go in and undo all that and then turn it into a ordered list with numbers in it. And I can keep adding to this. Add another item here, another item. Next, I can also add an image into the page. So I can use the image icon and then press on the button and find an image on my drive. So I'm gonna go to my C drive and pick a random image from there. And I can paste that image directly into the page. That's pretty cool, but well, the URL looks a little funny here. Now, the reason that this happened is because we're currently working with an untitled document and there is no folder associated with it. So let me kill this and let's go ahead and save this as a real document in my documents folder and save it as test document. Okay, so now we got a document with a real folder. So if I right click here and go to open folder, we can see it's in the documents markdown monster folder. So if I close this now and go do my image edition again, we will see that I can go to my temp folder, pick my image, and now it will ask me whether I wanna save the image in the folders path where the markdown document lives. And then it prompts me once again for the file name and it puts it into the documents markdown monster file. I say save 
And now the image is embedded directly in that folder. If we go back out into that folder, we can see now that the image was actually copied into that folder location. Alternately, you can also capture images using the screen capture. Now I have Snagit installed on this machine, so the screen capture automatically will use Snagit if you have it installed. So here I can select, for example, which mode I want to capture, and so the all-in-one mode works well with a two-second capture delay, and I'm going to go ahead and capture. So I'm going to capture this Explorer window or part of it. So I'm going to just grab this bottom part here, and that will open up in the editor, and then I can go ahead and use Snagit's tools to mark up that image. So I put a border around it and I mark up this text. And I'm going to say finish and call it Explorer window. And that image gets embedded into the page here. It's also quite easy to embed links into the page. So I'm going to add another bullet here. And let's assume for a second that I would like to highlight the Markdown Monster site and link it to the actual website. To do this, I'm going to click on the link icon or use Control K to bring up the embed image dialog. It's already pre-filled with the Markdown Monster site and the URL that I already had on my clipboard. If there is a URL on the clipboard, it will automatically be pasted in here if the value is not already set. And then all I have to do is paste the link and we're good to go. If I want to embed code into the page, Markdown offers a number of ways to do this. I have some JavaScript code on my clipboard here and I'm just going to paste it into the document. So the text is naturally indented because I took it out of the middle of a page. So the text is automatically formatted as code. The reason for that is, is that uh, there is at least four spaces or a tab in the editor that forces the text over to the right. And that's the cue that Markdown uses and treats a block of text as code. If we want to be more explicit, we can use fenced code blocks. So I can then just left justify the text and highlight this text and then mark it up with the language of choice. So of course I can also type this. So I can type these tags manually if I want to do it in text. But the selector makes it nice and easy for those of you that might be new to Markdown and don't know what the language definitions are. Now you also notice that the code is syntax colored over here. This is not a function of Markdown, but rather by the rendering engine, in this case by Markdown Monsters preview themes that handle this for you. The Highlight JS engine that is used to handle the syntax coloring handles these with themes that are attached to the actual preview themes. So if I switch to GitHub, you'll see quite a different code block experience for the syntax coloring. So let's go back to Darken where we started. If you need to export your markdown to HTML, you have a number of different options. The first one is to simply view the output in your web browser and use the web browser to actually save the HTML and all the related resources into a folder. So in Chrome, I can use save as, and when it does, it saves the HTML document along with all the resources, all the script files, the CSS, and the images that are associated with this document. So this is a full way to capture the entire HTML document, including all the assets. If you just after the raw HTML output, you can use save as HTML, which will save just the generated HTML to a file. If we look at this document here, we can open the folder and just look at the raw output that was generated. The output is very basic. There's no formatting. And then if we actually look at this in a text editor, it's just the raw output that was generated here. Finally, I can also select all or part of the document and then use the option to copy markdown selection as HTML and then create a new document and paste that HTML into the document so I can review it. So here you can see the HTML that was generated from the markdown. It's just a nice and easy way to get a partial document perhaps turned into HTML. This process also works in reverse. We can take HTML and turn it into Markdown. So I have an untitled document here and I can go into my browser and I'm gonna to go to GitHub and pick up some HTML from one of my repositories. And I'm just gonna paste that HTML using paste HTML as Markdown. When I do this, the document is now converted from HTML to Markdown. And as you can see, the editor picked up most of the Markdown directly without any changes. So this is an ideal use case because GitHub already uses Markdown for formatting itself. So it uses a pretty simple structure. But realize that not all HTML is gonna be quite as nice. If HTML can't be converted, it will remain as HTML in the document. 
Still, this is a good way to get some HTML into your document ready for editing in Markdown Monster. Markdown Monster includes a weblog publishing add-in that you can use to publish your Markdown document to any Meta Weblog API or WordPress blog. So you can add an abstract, a category, or multiple categories, and some keywords that are used on the document. So then you can post to your weblog and that off it goes. Now I'm not gonna actually do this because this is not a valid post, but I'm gonna save the metadata and show you what this actually looks like. So at the end of the document, a block of XML is added that contains the metadata that makes up this post. So when we go back here, this information is still intact. Now the web logs are set up on this last page here and I can configure a blog and then go ahead and publish to that blog. So let's check this out on one of the other posts here. So this was a previously made post. So if I go to the publish page here, I can see post to web log and here's my description and I'm gonna go ahead and publish that and off it goes and here's the updated published post. I can also edit existing blog posts by going to my website and saying to download, let's say the last 100 posts. So now I am going to pick an older post here. And let's pick this one and I'm gonna open that up and you can see that the document comes in perfectly and it is smart enough to send down the raw markdown. When a post is imported, it is created in the Markdown folder and it pulls down all the related images that are associated with this current post. So the images show up as local resources and you can now actually edit this document and then simply republish it back to the server. It's a great way to manage your blog with Markdown in an easy and efficient way. Thank you for checking out this video on Markdown Monster. Now go ahead, download it, check it out, and see what you think for yourself.